Let's continue our thorough investigation of the RX 480, AMD's newest release. I've already uploaded my initial review of the RX 480, check it out right here, as well as a discussion on the power draw issue, which I experienced firsthand by the way, and an ultra cheap PC simulating a sharp CPU bottleneck. Indulge yourself in those curiosities once this first card moves out of the way. Now remember what the intent of the RX 480 is, not was, but is, nothing has changed since the release date. This video card exists for the sake of budget conscious gamers in both 1080p and 1440p. AMD also claims that VR is a possibility with this card if paired with an adequate platform, but I'm not big into VR as of yet and experiences for the most part are fairly subjective. So what I decided to do in this video was pair the card with my GTX 980 Ti. Now I've already discussed explicit multi-adapter in grand detail in a video you can check out right here, but something I did not mention because I accidentally edited that segment of the video out before the final cut is that GPU order matters. And what I mean by that is that the card arrangement in terms of which is placed in the top PCIe slot and which is placed underneath subsequently can dramatically affect performance. This is why I placed my 980 Ti in the top slot when I ran it simultaneously with the GTX 1070. The 980 Ti was the better performer and theoretically had I rotated the two, frame rates would have fractionally diminished. With this combination, however, I'm just morbidly curious. Clearly, the 980 Ti is the all-around better card, and according to these independent tests, that is, with only one card in the test bench at a time, the 980 Ti yielded twice the frame rate of the RX 480 across the board. But what will happen when we place the RX 480 in the top slot like so, and the GTX 980 Ti, which is in the rig currently, underneath it? Mid-range card with one of the best available, and then again in reverse, what will happen when we place the 980 Ti on the top and the RX 480 underneath? Enough of the chit chat on my end, let's find out. First up was the RX 480 in the top slot. Keep in mind this is also the card from which our display cable will run. I had to install both the AMD Crimson driver for the 480 as well as the Nvidia driver from scratch. These weren't plug and play. Once both cards were installed and detected, I hopped into Ashes of the Singularity DirectX 12 mode and enabled multi-GPU support. The results shocked me a bit. In all honesty, I expected the frame rates to fall somewhere just above the 980 Ti's independent frame rates, but that was not the case at all. In fact, in two of the three batches and the average overall, the combo didn't keep up with a single TI. Disappointing given the fact that the combo hypothetically would have cost an additional 33% here in the US. So what this is telling me is that explicit multi-adapter is leveraging the primary display device much more heavily than I presumed it was. I actually came up with an analogy to help explain this a little better. Yep, bear with me on this one. I want you to picture a wagon, got it? A wagon. And a gentleman by the name of RX480 up front. He's a fairly fast fellow, not the quickest, but efficient and productive. He's pulling the wagon at his usual pace, again, quickly, but not the quickest. Now imagine a second gentleman, or woman I suppose in this case, pushing the same wagon from behind. Her name is GTX 980 Ti. Now she is quick, I'm talking Usain Bolt quick. And she uses her insane speed to push the wagon from behind as fast as she can. Well, she wants to. But there's a problem, she's being held up by the RX 480 up front. She'll give the 480 a boost and force him to pull a good bit faster, but if she pushes too fast she'll topple the 480 and tear some flesh off his bones, equivalent to the massive screen tearing, see what I did there, you would experience if a very weak card was paired with an overpowered one. And this is why it's recommended that two cards of similar compute performance be paired together, otherwise you'll have one card rendering individual tiles at lightning fast rates and the other card lagging far behind with its tile rendering, hence the screen tearing. By the way, I tried pairing the 980 Ti with my G210 as promised, that's a card with 2816 CUDA cores paired with a card boasting only 16 of those, but was unable to open the game. The RX 480 thankfully is nowhere near this weak. It still holds its own, it doesn't slow down the 980 Ti to any substantial extent, however it is worth noting that the 480 did prevent the 980 Ti underneath from rendering tiles of each frame at its full speed. Following suit we have the 980 Ti paired with the RX 480 in which the Ti was inserted into the top slot and the RX 480 was inserted into the one underneath. The display cable was plugged into the 980 Ti, the primary display device. I should note at this point that I had to reinstall both sets of drivers. The computer freaked out, booted into its ultra for low resolution mode and prompted for driver updates when I switched them, so I uninstalled everything and reinstalled both sets starting first with the primary display driver. It is recommended that you install in this order. And as for the results, better, not significantly better, but better overall and across the board. We're looking at around 15-20% to 20 frame rate gain, still not enough in my opinion to justify the second card's existence, but I expect better optimization in the future to increase these margins. Also keep in mind that Ashes is currently the only game that officially supports explicit multi-adapters, so unless you plan on playing all only ashes of the singularity on your bright and shiny new rig, 
which I highly doubt, don't go this route. In this case, the 980 Ti was pulling the wagon from the front at its usual lightning fast pace and was being aided by the RX 480 from behind. In this arrangement, the 980 Ti wasn't being held back by the 480, rather the Ti was forcing the 480 to keep up, and every now and then a few steps of the 480 would push the wagon even faster. Remember, the efficiency of this DirectX 12 technology depends almost entirely on the performance gap between the two cards being paired. AMD cards appear to do a bit better than Nvidia in this regard thanks to hardware-based asynchronous compute and reduced driver overhead, and again cards of similar compute performance work better in tandem. I tested an R9 380 with the RX 480 and found that the results of this pair weren't far from those obtained from the RX 480 plus 980 Ti combination, although the total price of the AMD set was significantly lower. Likewise, pairing the GTX 980 Ti with the GTX 1070 yielded massive gains as well, 50% overall from just a single 980 Ti. So here it is folks, the current state of explicit multi-adapter. Let's hope this trend continues in future DirectX 12 titles, the possibilities are endless here and and it appears as though EMA is as efficient, if not more efficient, than the current states of both SLI and Crossfire. If you like the experiments conducted in this video, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to follow me on Twitter at SCST Salazar. I've got the little, yeah, just look at that right there. It's also in the description as well, along with my Facebook and Instagram handles, and I guess URL for the Facebook thing. Uh, be sure to suggest future video ideas in the comment sections below. Remember, I read all comments. I really do. I scrolled, I actually, today I scrolled through like 230 of them and replied to about 20 of them. There's about a 10% chance I'll respond if you respond a day after the video's been posted. I tend to read most of my comments uh, immediately after the video's been uploaded. I just stick around. So I'll upload the video and then I'll refresh the page every minute or so and respond to as many of them as I can. So if you catch the video early, you might be able to talk with me a little bit more. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for, we're gonna do one more experiment with the RX 480. I'm gonna pair it with the FX 6300. Should be interesting being that that right now is a pretty good sweet spot for the average CPU uh, in a gaming rig. And so I'll be able to throw that in there. We'll see how that works out. And I'm just kind of blabbling on at this point because I want the video to seem longer than it actually is. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.